storm is coming upon us. Uh, we have a physical storm and we have a spiritual storm upon us. And we pray for the safety of each and every one that are in those areas. May uh, God bless them and protect them as we watch the eye of the storm change and continue to pray. Um, much, much going on behind the scenes. Things are very quiet uh, publicly, but much is going on behind the scenes. That's why President Trump is at Camp David. Uh, it's more than just the hurricane. Uh, it's part of the plan. Um, <laughs> we entitled this Deep Breaths. Sometimes you gotta take deep breaths. We get some of the craziest emails uh, that come in, and we'll address that in a little bit. You know, it's just it, it's mind blowing. Um, people need to take a deep breath. Not everything uh, is a symbol. Not everything is a conspiracy theory. Uh, you got to have discernment, and you take a little bit and you stretch it way out. And we'll explain that. Uh, later on. This is brought to you by Obey. As you can see, when we first started, I was putting my Obey on. Uh, seven games of basketball yesterday with Macaroni Bear. He almost beat me. He had me down. Uh, he had two chances to beat me uh, on a last second shot. And uh, so he's getting closer. And that's why I needed that. Um, and also there's uh, the, all the Obey products. One of the Obey products I wasn't talking about is the Dead Sea. Um, mask salt you can use that uh, that's great stuff our Israel trip will give you information on our Israel trip next week uh, use the lip balm go to our uh, his glory family partners on the main page go down to obey uh, go all the way down it's all the way down to get to our his glory family partners click on that put his glory in your checkout you get five percent off your discount 45 uh, 45 dollars or more free shipping get your Hebrews coffee had mine today uh, excellent stuff uh, supports the orphans we're sending um, we're sending money to Kenya to uh, have glory the cow have shelter so uh, help us with Hebrews help us with obey the Christian companies we want to help these Christian companies out as well $45 or more free shipping so load up on your Hebrews they have cocoa and they have tea too we're getting into tea season uh, I'm starting to look at drinking tea um, uh, tea, 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 tea um, a lot more. So the tea is soothing. Uh, also, uh, Beamer. Uh, many people are talking about the Beamer. The Beamer, I, I got on my Beamer today. Got on, did my Beamer session. Oh, I don't know what I would do without the Beamer. I, I feel so good. And uh, it's a, been a blessing. And all, everything is back. Everything's moving. And I still, the, the doctor said I would never get, um, I would never get feeling my left thigh. And every time I get on the Beamer, I feel it tingling more and more. And each time, I have feeling in it, but each time it feels like it's getting he it's healing more and more and more. Also, we said that uh, our partners at the Beamer uh, are uh, once you know people purchase these, you can purchase them. You can uh, there's financing for for those, or you can go see people who have them. And then when you buy them, you can have people come see you as well. And uh, you can be a distributor, you can do whatever you want. We don't distribute it, we just, we just promote the Beamer because it works and it's a Christian, uh, Christian uh, partner that we, we are with. Um, but anyway, your purchases for a Beamer, anybody that purchases a Beamer, they're giving uh, veterans, uh, veterans a Beamer to heal them. And uh, she actually, in her studio, I think she has three Beamers or four Beamers going and she just brings people in to heal them uh, in the California area. And uh, she allows uh, uh, veterans to come in for free. We are doing that here too at the ministry. So our Beamer, if you're located in the Cleveland area, we want to help our veterans. So free, free Beamer sessions, that's part of giving back and, and healing our veterans because our veterans have done so much for us and God bless them. Speaking of veterans, somebody sent me, uh, got to him for his glory yesterday, asked me about the reset and what the financial uh, they heard from some other place. I guess he's a former Marine. I never heard of the guy um, and even forgot the guy's name. Anyway, they asked, said, is this the numbers that are going to be back to American people? Is this number right? Um, and I don't remember the numbers that, I, that they told me about, but it was pretty close. Uh, so whoever that was, it's pretty close. Um, the, the, it, there's four pieces to this reset financially. One is the number that the guy sent me. I think I've said it maybe before. I mean, it's around 10 million. 
Um, the second is the military. The military is going to get substantially more. And then the third of this is um, uh, the House of David. And then uh, there is something called a trickle up, I'm being told. And the last number I heard it was a $3 trillion trickle up. And what that means is instead of having a welfare system and resetting and give people that have gr give people great wealth that can't handle it, it's kind of like the lottery. You hear the story of the lottery where so many people win the lottery and they're bankrupt 10 years later because they don't know how to manage the money. So this $3 trillion trickle up would be uh, in replacement, I'm told, for, um, for that. So there would be criteria that you would have to do to get this money so you, would, you wouldn't get it all at once and you wouldn't blow it, that they would teach you how to, write, how to handle your finances, how to handle a checkbook, and so forth and so on. I thought it was a pretty unique and great idea because we don't even teach that in schools anymore. Nobody teaches uh, on how to balance your, uh, your, 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 most people don't use a checking account, but balance your checking account. Or what credit and debit means, what are assets and what are liabilities. What, just because I have a credit card doesn't mean, uh, you know, how, do I, how, do I, how do I play the interest rates? Pretty soon that won't matter, but the, you, you know what I mean. We gotta edu educate people on everyday living. They don't have that, they don't learn that in school. Um, which goes back to a conversation I had with two colonels yesterday that we'll talk about that part of it breaks my heart. So we'll tell you what we know and um, we'll let the chips fall where they may. All right, uh, Joe Manchin. Uh, Joe Manchin, uh, this is going, uh, this is hitting several news networks. I, w I always liked Joe Manchin. I thought he was like middle of the road kind of guy. And then somebody told me there was some information about, his, uh, I'll just say a family, family members that was kind of disturbing. Um, that may be why he voted the way he did for uh, Kavanaugh, I don't know. But it's very fascinating. This weekend, Joe Manchin is talking about making the decision by the end of the weekend to run for governor of West Virginia. That would make the Senate seat go back open. What does Joe know? Um, what does Joe know? West Virginia voted for President Trump by two thirds. So it's tough to be a Democrat in West Virginia. Maybe that's what Joe Manchin is saying. He's very popular. Um, all right, Biden, Joe Biden, the gaffes and he's being ridiculed. Some of this is, uh, some of this obviously is Joe Biden being Joe Biden, being a gaffe. Some of this is uh, manipulated deeper. And some of this is just uh, absolutely ridiculous. And what I mean ridiculous is, um, uh, People are making a, mo a mountain out of a molehill. If he he just you know like the other day, I think it was yesterday it was on many many new talking points that uh, he went, in a speech he was talking and he said uh, my uh, my boss some are going well he forgot Obama's name he's he's dementia he's losing his mind I mean they're reaching with this stuff I mean you're making too much out of that people who speak a lot. Sometimes they slip of the tongue. Sometimes they say OEN instead of OAN. Uh, sometimes they say other things. And by the way, there was a person I want to, I want to apologize to that uh, somebody told, it was my wife that told me that made a comment uh, on OE, uh, that, that they were just trying to help me out on Facebook or something about OEN. Uh, and I, I made a big deal about that, I think yesterday. That's, I wasn't referring to you. I was referring to a couple emails that came in that were very harsh. Uh, so your comment wasn't about you. So I apologize if you thought it was about you. Uh, we get many emails that come in and uh, they're not being suggestive. They're being harsh. They're just trying to, they're, they're trying to create havoc. So it, it was not meant towards you. There's somebody else too. Something similar happened on YouTube uh, that they made a comment and I knew they were me meaning it in good nature. Uh, but that, I wasn't referring to you either. So usually I don't see the comments. So um, I'm, I'm getting it from, let's say if I get four or five emails from somebody and um, they're not being helpful, they're just trying to stir up trouble. That's what brings it up. Okay, so hopefully I got that clarified. So but Joe Biden, you know, it's not all as you see. Um, some of it's not warrants, uh, warranted against him. Some is very petty. Uh, the next Democratic... Uh, Debate will be the 12th, be very fascinating. You start to slip in the polls. Um, what is a problem 
for Joe Biden. Not only was he the Obama's vice president and he was in the office and knew what was going on, uh, well, he was talking about Crimea. Crimea. Remember Crimea. The, the, the enemy of the people, the mainstream media will not tell you this. It was reported by the foreign minister of Russia came out against John Kerry. He blasted John Kerry. He says, John Kerry may not like what I'm going to say. This was a few months ago. And uh, Lazarov, he came out and said that Kerry and Obama gave Putin in, this, in Russia the green light to go into Crimea. But that's not what they're saying. Uh, nobody wants to run with that. John Kerry didn't respond on that. Where is John Kerry? He's not talking a lot lately. So think, put that in perspective that according to the uh, foreign minister of Russia, that John Kerry and President Obama allowed Russia to take Crimea. That's, not, that's, that's out of his own word. That's his words. Go back and look at it. Um, and we also know, if you tie this in with the dots, we also know that President Obama was caught on a hot mic with the former president of Russia before Putin took back over. And he said, I, uh, give me some time. I need some flexibility. Uh, after my new election, I can do some things. Well, what kind of things? So who's really the Russian collusion? And what's really going on in Ukraine? Rudy Giuliani knows. The truth is going to come out. And what was Joe Biden's connections to Ukraine? This thing gets so ugly, so dirty. Wait till we bring up HSBC. We talked about HSBC and James Comey. Oh, this is about eight, nine months ago. Uh, it's popping back up again. We said it would come back up again. HSBC and James Comey is going to be a, a, a train wreck all by itself. Um, that's why HSBC, well, we'll get into that more. Um, HSBC did some bad things too. Um, you can't trust most of the banks. This is kind of disturbing. Um, I don't know 100% about this yet. Uh, I was first told about General Mattis, Mad Dog Mattis, being, let's say, uh, remember we said some black hats turn to white hats, and maybe some white hats we think are white hats or were literally black hats the whole time, or maybe they switched to black hats. In this case, it may be that it was a black hat all the time. It pained me. I didn't want to, I did, I, I heard it from several sources. Uh, the first time I heard it was actually just before we went to Dallas. Um, but more information has come out uh, with General Mattis. You know, General Mattis just uh, wrote a book. His book, uh, there are some areas in there that are concerning what he said in his book. But we now know that General Mattis uh, had ties to Bezos at Amazon. He was the one that authorized the no-bid deal, which Esper, the new D Department of D Defense, came in and, and is the new Department of Defense, where the Army took over the Navy. Remember, the Navy and the Marines are together. That's why it pains me that Marines have done bad things. Admirals have done bad things. Um, that Mattis was uh, tight with Bezos to try to figure out how to get the, the, the Department of Defense to be more, um, more savvy in technical spending. Uh, so that could be that maybe he was legitimately trying to do that uh, or he may have been compromised. Uh, the, 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 the proof is not out there yet, but it is very suspicious. And Esper has put a hold on that contract. Well, we do know also that uh, Google did the same thing with Eric Schmidt with Mattis. We know Mattis had ties to Hillary Clinton. Um, but what was most disturbing was two conversations I had with two colonels yesterday. They were two uh, army colonels, and I don't know if they even know each other. Um, but they said uh, they didn't trust Mattis, that Mattis was uh, part of the problem he was uh, a general that was uh, thought he knew everything. He got too wrapped up into just money, 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 get pour us more money. So one of the problems that we've had in our wars, the amount of billions of dollars and trillions of dollars we've spent on wars and we've gotten nowhere. And both army, or both army colonels said to me, he goes, what has he really done? 
He hasn't fought a, a, a regular war in 20 or 30 years. Our wars since before 9-11 have been, you know, pinpricks to go in against Iraq, which was not much of a military, or our war is technical, shooting bombs, or our war is um, against, uh, uh, you know, Islamic extremists, terrorists. So there hasn't been a traditional war to use your war knowledge in a long time. This is also something that Chuck Missler, way back in 2009, said was a warning for the, Pen the, for the Pentagon and a warning for our military. He said there are a lot of, of Christians that go through to become generals and colonels. However, they've come through the denomination teaching. They don't understand from a general war perspective of how Israel is the center of everything in Bible prophecy in the end days. Matter of fact, many of these denominations are anti-Israel. Uh, they don't understand, or they just they, they believe the church has replaced Israel, which is blasphemy. They don't understand the deep roots of Islam, the Quran. So they're not ready to go and take on a modern day battle because of not knowing those two key elements. And we've we've been ridiculed for saying this. Um, but it's true. It's coming from sources. Not, I'm not saying it. There's, sources are telling us that President Trump needs to surround himself more with military leaders that understand that Israel is the center of Bible prophecy, that, that understands the Quran inside, outside, upside down, understands the word of God, and also has a military perspective and can put all these pieces together. He does not have that complete around him. He needs to get that around him. He needs more spiritual leaders around him in the same as, uh, atmosphere. Both these colonels said the same thing. Uh, and just ironically, they weren't the same colonels. Uh, I heard that yesterday. I, was, uh, I got that information, uh, what was yesterday, Friday? Friday afternoon. Uh, and then I happened to be, I had to pick up my son late from a uh, football game last night. So I had to step later than I normally do. And on Laura Ingram, Laura Ingram show last night, they had two, a lieutenant colonel and a colonel. And I respect both of these guys came in and said the exact same thing. It was almost the same words that I heard earlier. So I pray that General Mattis is not compromised. I pray that um, he has turned, um, he, he's, he, if he's done anything bad, he's repented, but it is heartbreaking. And our military does need to wake up that you just don't spend a lot of money. And money is a corrupter. Money is not uh, the, the root of all evil, but money can reach, lead you in the wrong direction. And the amount of money we've been spending with our military is astronomical. And uh, it wasn't until President Trump until they audited it. Where is this money going? You remember Donald Rumsfeld, $2.3 billion where they couldn't find? Uh, and then 9-11 happens two days later? There's no coincidence. Um, I think we've, we've talked about all our partners. Uh, the, the one partner we didn't talk about, two partners, The Chosen. Many people have seen The Chosen. It's a game changer. Uh, go see The Chosen. You can go to www.hisglory.me under our uh, a family partner, uh, His Glory Family Partner page. Click on that. You get the free episode, first episode free. And then you can buy that and share that with family and friends. It will change people's lives. So get The Chosen today. Also, The Blessed App. We're going to be doing more things inside the Blessed app. We did a Q&A yesterday in the Blessed app. So get your Blessed app. That is on our main page as well. You can pick that up. And your uh, donations, um, God bless you. Whether they're custom donation or reoccurring donation, those are crucial to us as we start to move forward to do more TV and content in our studio. So God bless you for your reoccurring and your custom donations if you want to send a check or money order. God bless you. Also, uh, our His Glory gear, we're going to be working with our new uh, clothing partner to, to have them take it over, do it more professional. Uh, you'll see more designs coming out of our His Glory wear. But right now, you can get any of the His Glory wear uh, free shipping, $45 or more. So check that out. Um, uh, one other bit of, of good news when it comes to this. Um, you, you, if you've been following us a while, you, you know that I'm a former director of AT&T. And I couldn't get anybody to, get, to call me back at at and It was the craziest thing in the world. Nobody from at and wanted wanted our business. Um, and so, we, you know, some of you are taking advantage of our Verizon deal. So if you have a reoccurring donation of 11 11 or more, 
uh, you can reach out to us and we, we'll, we have a, a, a perk for you that you can get the Verizon, if you're a Verizon customer, other than the all you can eat plan, you can get 18% off your Verizon bill, off your data plan. Well, I know AT&T has the same deal because I signed the deal when I was a director at AT&T and I, uh, for the whole, the whole country. So I've been working with AT&T for a long, to long, uh, long time um, to try to get somebody to call me back. So finally, I just picked up the phone and called one of the top guys because um, we have somebody else that's interested in, in possibly buying CNN. So I picked up the phone and called one of my, one of my old bosses that's still at AT&T. Long story short, AT&T is coming back to the table. Uh, we will have a, a program with AT&T next week. Uh, we'll get the details out. They're far. They're they're along. Um, so, uh, reoccurring donations of eleven eleven or more. You're going to have the ability to either pick AT and T or Verizon and get an eighteen percent discount. So, you'll have choices. Choices. All right. Uh, <clears throat> deep state. Uh, remember, six months ago, deep. The word deep state in itself was a very controversial or conspiracy a conspiracy word nobody um nobody used nobody used that uh that was like taboo i remember comey about eight months ago uh was asked about deep state and he goes i don't know deep state that's yeah, conspiracy i don't know what you're talking about deep state but have you noticed now that deep state is now mainstream not just on oan and fox news but even on fake news and criminal news Deep state is a regular word. So deep state is now part of our vocabulary. We know that there is a deep state and they're not hiding that piece anymore. So the rest of the stuff they're hiding is coming too. Someone was asking me about, will these reporters pay the price for their treason? Yes, they will. Remember we told you, we, uh, we showed you the list. We sent the list out. Maybe we'll send the list out again. Uh, remember our list and WikiLeaks list was pretty close to being the same. I don't remember the differences, but um, there's another list out there, I'm told. And three of Fox News people are on there, and you know who they are. President Trump, I believe, called out two of the three live on Twitter the other day. Uh, Comey and HSBC, this is something we talked about a year ago. We also tweeted this out, and dangerously tweeted this out about a year ago. And uh, I can't tweet this out again because this will really get us uh, under uh, scrutiny. But HSBC was one of the what was one of the banks that was on this big chart that I sent out. It had the charts of the business or the banks, had the charts of the the uh, compromised um, uh, military contractors. It had the charts of the uh, pharmaceutical companies. <laughs> I sent this out a year ago, and I'm glad nobody looked at it because uh, I shouldn't have sent that out. Um, and it also had uh, the banks, and HSBC is one of them. HSBC is one of them. Uh, Comey and HSBC is an ugly bombshell that has not gone away. Matter of fact, I know somebody that's writing a book about this. Um, a lawyer that's writing a book to expose just the Comey and um, the Mueller piece of HSBC. It is a bombshell that ties back to the EU, China, and treason. This is this in itself is a huge bombshell. Um, and what made me bring this up? Oh, it finally is being reported publicly. I think OEN ran with this yesterday. Uh, Jack per, per whatever some Jack at. Um, OEN uh, ran with this uh, Comey HSBC. So they're starting to dig into this, this horrific scandal. Remember, there's some scandals in insurance companies that are even worse. It's coming out. Judge Scalia's son is now the labor secretary. Um, Dems, this, is, this shows you that the Great Awakening is actually happening for left, right, and middle. The Democrats today, or maybe it was yesterday, are pushing uh, Attorney General Barr to open up a DOJ investigation in 2007 why the Epstein got a plea deal. So this Epstein thing has worked perfectly. It's woken the left up, it's woken up the right, and it's woken up the center. So everybody wants to know more about Epstein. They know for all three levels that corruption occurred. They know child pedophilia occurred. 
They know big names occurred, Hollywood politicians, and it's woken everyone up. You tie this with Nexum, and it's Katie Bar the Door. Don't at me for Katie Bar the Door. Don't at me for Cooked in the Squat. Don't at me for Bad Oreo. Uh, we get these at me's. And um, hey, we try to lighten things up. God's in control. All right, Dems, uh, so Epstein, this Epstein um, is waking everyone up. Uh, Kate Steinle, this was on many news organizations yesterday, that the illegal who was uh, deported five times, he was protected in a sanctuary city in San Francisco, killed Kate Steinle, got off the first time for murder or even manslaughter. Weapons charge was thrown out yesterday for technicality. People are starting to wake up. Why are we taking illegals that are violent criminals, killing our people, and we have cities that are protecting them? It's time for a wake. I don't care if you're a Democrat or Republican. A law is a law. We shouldn't be divided whether we're de Democrat or Republican to break, or to break the law or honor the law. Enough with the Republican, enough of the Democrat. Be an American citizen. Use logic and follow our laws. I can tell you, when I go to the voting booth, um, I've mentioned this many times, and I'm completely sincere when I say this. I'm not a Republican. I'm not a Democrat. I'm not an independent. My King of Kings is Jesus Christ. He is the Lord. He will usher in the one world government of the Davidic covenant. When I go to the voting booth, it's based on God's precepts and commandments and who the better candidate is. I don't care if there's an R or an L or an I or a P or an A, B, H, C, D, Q, R, S, Y, Z. It's about the people. We need to be united. I saw a uh, interesting thing back when Eisenhower and John F. Kennedy. We need to have more of the Eisenhower, J.F. Kennedy relationships uh, like of old. And when the scandal comes out about JFK and how Q started, you remember before Q, it was Z, it was called Project Z. Project Z literally started be, be, with Eisenhower passing the baton to JFK. And more of this will come out. They work together to try to bring down what we know is the evil cabal deep state. It's time to wake up. Jack, Jack at Twitter was hacked. Was he hacked? Or is this a setup? Jack yesterday was hacked and uh, they were hacking and sending things out uh, under Jack's Twitter account. Jack is, if you don't know, he's the CEO of Twitter. Is this the white hats or is this the black hats or is this a gray hat? Well, we know it's not just a random hack. Uh, I don't know the answer and I will, I will try to get the answer, but a lot of these answers are being closely played to the chest right now because we're getting close to the reset. So you really have to use discernment. In some cases, it doesn't matter. It is what it is. Just be awake. If he is hacked, they're going to use it one or two ways. They're either going to use it to say he was really hacked or they're going to use it to say uh, to, he was really hacked. And if something comes out uh, that they want to cover up, they can say, well, it's a hack and we're going to shut things down. So they can use it. They can use it both for the the good, the white hats or the black hats. We don't know the difference yet. Um, but just trust that the white hats have more ammo, more ammo, and uh, the eye in the sky sees all. The DNI uh, sees all, uh, and um, Pfizer works both ways. Heard something, something fascinating about Ruth Bader, uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg yesterday, and it was one of those. Run this by me again, and it's like, wow, wow. But it does make sense. It does make sense. Um, just wow. How can you flip? How can you flip? Uh, compromise to flips. Who's in control? Who's in control? Who's in control of the videos? Who's in control of the pictures? Who's in control of the cyber? Space force? Eye in the sky? Use logic. Why was she brought up so much this last three days? Why did she go three weeks with intensive radiation and then they tell us after she's done? There's more to the story. And... 
It's clever, very clever, if it's true, if it's true. Uh, that is just one source's um, strong conjecture. I would say just strong conjecture. Okay, so um, fake news is exploiting uh, Akomi's lies and uh, the, the, uh, the uh, IG report as um, uh, a couple of people were saying that this is, is that strike two for James Comey. I mean, you cannot get, uh, you can't get taken to the cleaners more than these last two OIG reports. Uh, Mar everyone says Horowitz is a fair shooter, a straight shooter. Comey even said that before he's got busted. Anybody else would be in jail. It's got people upset. I understand that. We got, I know people personally uh, that are in this movement that are upset. They want him to go to jail. Uh, we have to show patience. It's part of the plan. It got perseverance. It's about letting it out and getting people to be more aware. And you take them down on the bigger crimes. Um, but this is what's showing you the Great Awakening. So there's no question that James Comey has been shown a liar and a lawbreaker. It's unequivocal. He broke laws. That's from the IG, both to both IG reports. But now we see mainstream media and their so-called legal experts try to cover for him and say, well, in the scheme of things, he was just trying to do it for the betterment of the country. Or it's like when you have to speed to put a fire out in a, in a, in a house. No, a lie is a lie. Breaking the law is breaking the law. Classified information is classified information. His, as, as uh, somebody said, strike two, strike three, you're out. And strike three is coming. There's a curveball coming right down in the lower plate that he cannot hit, and it will not be uh, it will not be stopped. Even Clapper and Brennan came out in support, claiming his integrity. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. Comey's integrity coming from Brennan and Clapper. <laughs> There's gonna be a lot of clap on, clap off, <laughs> step in the kill box, tick tock. Wow. James Baker, also subject of the leak investigation. He's not out of the woods. Matthew Whitaker, playing a very, very, very important role now that is more visual. Do you notice he's been on TV like every day in the last week? Um, it's not a coincidence. He's playing a part. He was, un, he was, uh, he was in El Chapo's, uh, all of El Chapo's hearings, so he has all the information. He knows what's coming down, and he's alluding to that McCabe is going to be the first. He's making awareness, so watch. Some say it could happen over Labor Day weekend, or first thing Monday, or first thing Tuesday, since we have a long weekend. Actor Michael Sherman, he's the other guy from... Uh, uh, Boardwalk Empire. Uh, so the the one woman that we mentioned from Boardwalk Empire, I think it's called Boardwalk Empire. Uh, Nucky, um, it, was, it was prohibition. She was the one that uh, claimed that Weinstein raped her, and now bringing Disney, the two CEOs of Disney, into the lawsuit. One of the other actors in this show, which who, he played a uh, a, a uh, um, federal agent to try to break up the alcohol. Anyway, he says it's time for vote, Trump voters to die. This is your Hollywood telling you Trump voters should die. Wow. Does Hollywood out in left field or what? Can you imagine if somebody would have said that about President Obama or President, well, maybe Clinton? There would be an uproar. But no, there's, there's just, there's, there's crickets. Speaking of crickets, there's an Alabama Baptist Church minister who put up a sign, one for blacks, one for whites, which is racist in itself. We're all united in one, whether you're black, white, red, green, pink, whatever your outside color, God doesn't care about the color because we all came from Adam and Eve. Science, is, science has proven that we've come from one set of a DNA molecule uh, from a Y and um uh, a male and female uh, chromosome. That's science. That's not the Bible. That's science telling us that we all came from one. Um, God looks at the heart, and our hearts are all equal. We're all pump, scarlet, red blood. And it's all about uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. So he's saying that if you um, blacks that vote for Trump, uh, he doesn't want Trump um, 
elected, and if whites vote for Trump, they're racist. Um, didn't give a reason. He doesn't want Trump reelected without a reason. No, no, no reason. I, I mean, if, if President Trump say he went against God's precepts and commandments on X, Y, Z, then as a pastor, you can stand up and say, well, this president goes against God's precepts and commandments on X, Y, Z. So, you know, follow the Bible. But you got to have a, you have a, you have to have an answer. And there's a certain party that says they are pro-choice. Choice of what? Choice of life? God created life, and you don't mess with a child. And you're pro uh, to do whatever you want against God's precepts and commandments? Uh, I don't think so. God's precepts and commandments are for today. So we have to look for the pulpit. The pulpit, as the mustard seed teaches us, Jesus taught us that the mustard seed is the seed, the word of God, grows up to be the plant, the tree. The tree was the church. But the birds of the air nestled in. The birds generically, uh, es, um, expositional constancy, fancy theological saying that the symbols in the Bible are always, idioms are always meaning the same thing. A generic bird is, is evil, is demonic. Jesus was telling us that Satan was going to attack the church from within. And that's exactly what's happened. Through the Catholics, through the, through the Protestants, through these mega churches, it's all being exposed based on religion, and false doctrine. That's why it's so important to know the Word of God. Only 10% of the true church, 10% know the living Word of God. That's why this is more important than physically eating and drinking than know His Word. So you are not fooled by these so-called pastors. They're not pastors. How did Reverend Al Sharpton become a reverend? Reverend of what? How did uh, the other one that causes race problems all the time? Um, Reverend Jesse Jack, Reverend of what? It's not the Reverend of the Word of God. God is the God of unification and love through Jesus Christ, no matter your color. Not of confusion and division like some of these at the pulpit want you to do. Stand up and say, no, it's time for the true church, which is not in a building. We are the church. We are the lampstand to be filled with the olive oil, which is the Holy Spirit, and wake the world up for the greatest revival ever. It's time to bring people to Christ and not get caught in denomination. It's Christ plus nothing else. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No other way. Census Bureau abruptly abandons a relationship with care. So the first question is, what, what is the Census Bureau dealing with care for? Census Bureau, if you may know, is getting the census of who our population is illegals and non-illegals, remember that's part of the story, so that you can change the balance of voting of representatives based on population under the Constitution. So that why would they be teaming with a terrorist organization named CARE? Well, somebody outed them and they said, we're done. Remember, Michael Flynn, General Flynn, a absolute patriot, will go down as an American hero, General Flynn. So we'll add more Rogers. General Flynn, the reason that Sally Yates and Obama and Brennan and Clapper hated him is that he exposed the Muslim Brotherhood, which has infiltrated our, our national security and our government. That was part of the plan. That was part of the Arab Springs. And guess what? It's boomeranging back on them. It's been a war on religion. As Daniel said in the end days, the clay and the iron, they don't mix. The two feet of the old Roman Empire, the iron, which used to be Rome, and the clay, which were Constantine split off and had East and West Rome, and that was called Constantinople under Constantine. That is now called Istanbul. That is the headquarters or the capital of modern day Turkey. Turkey was part of the Ottoman Empire. Uh, Aragon is trying to reestablish re the Ottoman Empire in the end days. Turkey is Gomer in the Ezekiel 38 and 39. See how the Bible's playing right out before our very eyes? We don't need fake news. We don't need, even need OEN. We know what tomorrow's going to be based on the Bible. The Bible shows us exactly what's going to happen. We're coming in, the eminent of the Psalm 83 war, and we see for the first time in history that Ezekiel 38 and 39, the players are in place for the first time ever. Um, 
OEN is again reporting that uh, document, documents implicate CIA director uh, John Brennan targeting Papadopoulos with no justification. John Brennan, court TV, court TV. Get your popcorn and get your Diet Coke. We don't want to take glee in the, in the, in the wicked because even the God Almighty says he doesn't delight in the death of the wicked. We pray for each and every one of them that they repent before it's too late. Remember the thief on the cross. To be a thief on the cross in ancient Rome were the worst of the worst. You were a murderer. You were a terrorist. You were the, the worst of the worst. But even the thief on the cross at the last minute accepted the Christ to be his Lord and Savior, and he entered into the kingdom. And we pray for those as well. There are many thieves on the cross that have done horrible things, but we have a God and a Savior, Jesus Christ, that is for forgiveness. And we pray that they ask for forgiveness before the breath is taken away. Because once the breath is taken away and your physical heart stops, your soul and spirit live on. Science tells us that now. That's not something we hope for as in 10 years ago. That's a scientific proof that the soul and spirit live on forever. But the question is, where does it live on forever? It's based on that fundamental decision you make in your heart, not in your brain, not in your religion, but a love relationship with Jesus Christ in the heart will determine your eternal life before this heart stops. And this heart is the Holy of Holy. And that's where we meet him. We can't meet him anywhere else. So we pray that they are, ask for forgiveness. New Mexico, making a news that they seized the property of Epstein's ranch. I can't remember the name of the ranch. Remember, though, executive order by President Trump back in January of 2000... When was that? 2018. Uh, January 2018, executive order saying that POTUS, the POTUS sign, that crimes against humanity, sedition and treason, those assets of those people who violated it can go back to the United States government. So the deep state and all the crimes that they've committed against humanity, including Epstein and more, the banks, the Rothschilds, all of it, can be seized and come back into the coffins of the United States Treasury. That's a very big deal because that's coming into play. Symbols. Oh my goodness, this is all what we're going to end on. Symbols, symbols, symbols. Yes, the evil, they, they have symbols. They put the symbols right in front of your face. We've talked about codes. We've talked about symbols. Um, they're there. But some people take symbols and take them way out of proportion. We, we got somebody that made a comment, uh, comment and we got an email uh, about our new YouTube uh, banner. And they said our YouTube banner is promoting anti-Semitic activity. We at His Glory. Our banner is creating anti-Semitic because of the symbol. Well, let me just tell you how the symbol came about and what the symbol means. So people take a symbol and they re run into the symbol. Next thing they're going to say is they saw me scratching the side of my nose and that was a symbol to an ancient tribe in the Amazon of the, uh, the, 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 the booger eaters. You, 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 everything is not a symbol. Just because we put up a new... A banner, there's nothing hidden in this banner. The symbol goes to the lion, the U.S. flag, and the Israeli flag. This is the purpose of this, our banner. The banner is for his glory. His glory is the center of all things. His glory of God, his presence, his essence, the cross, is the center of everything. That's why we're here. That's why we're going through the testing of life. The cross is what we stand and die on. That's his glory. That's the center of our new uh, logo or our new banner. And then it goes from the left to right. It has the lion. It's the lion of the tribe of Judah. That is our redeemer. The Christ will come from the lion of the tribe of Judah and fulfill the Davidic covenant and be a king in Jerusalem. And the United States flag and the Israeli flag represents the great harvest of the Jew and Gentiles coming together as the last harvest. So a symbol, symbol of anti-Semitic? You've got to be kidding me. Stop. Take a drink. Go for a bike ride. Everything's not the symbol. Don't shoot. Aim and, 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 and ready. 
It's ready, aim, fire. Get your facts straight. I had people, I was wearing my Israeli uh, 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 Star David hat uh, a few months ago, and people were like, you're a Zionist. You're, you're a Talmud Zionist, Noahoids. You're, just, you're, you're, you're part of the Mossad. <laughs> no, I'm just wearing a hat from Israel. The, 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 the Star of David happens to be the symbol of Israel, and I'm on the line of David. There is a difference between extreme Jews, Zionist, e deep state, and regular uh, uh, regular Jews that are not religious at all. And then, then there's the, the remnant, the remnant of God's people. And uh, that's what we're talking about, the remnant, the Bible of J Israel, the Bible of Jerusalem. That's what we're, call that's what we're calling on. So that's the Jew and the Gentile uh, and representing the, the, the great last harvest. Um, there is a deep state in Israel. We've talked about this many, many times. The Noahide laws are uh, evil. Uh, they have ties to uh, poppy. Um, it is not biblical. It, it, is, it is extremist. There is bad Mossad. There is bad Jewish people. Uh, there's bad white people. There's bad black people. There's bad red people. There's bad green people. Uh, there's bad Americans. There's bad whatever country you're in. There's good and then there's bad. Remember that Israel is the last of the deep state to be taken care of. Uh, all our sources say the same thing. They say unequivocally that Israel is the worst in the deep state and it has to be cleansed out. We do have a former Mossad that, that, talks to, that tells us stuff um, that is a good, he's, a, he's, a, he's good. Uh, but there are bad Orioles in the, in the Mossad as well. To, to put that in perspective, um, I don't know if many people know this, but the Rothschilds, and Soros, the names Rothschild and Soros. We know the Rothschilds are part of the 13 bloodlines of Satan. We know um, Soros being George Soros and he's got family uh, ties. Those are, they're both Jewish. They're Jewish names. And that would fall into the Jewish deep state cabal bad Oreos versus good Jewish people who love the Lord and uh, love the one God, the uh, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And those Messianic Jews are re recognizing that the Messiah is the Christ. And more people are recognizing in the Jewish faith that Jesus is the, is, is the Christ, the Messiah. So we know we're going into the end day. So not all symbols mean something. Don't at somebody unless you know exactly what you're talking about. Because <laughs> for call us anti -Semi being anti-Israel, if anybody knows this ministry uh, and knows me, and I'm Jewish, and we are pro-Israel. And again, let me make this unequivocally clear. We are pro-biblical Israel, not the extremists, not the deep state. So sometimes we have to uh, answer some of these things. Um, you wouldn't think that the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the U.S. flag, his glory, the glory of God with a cross in the middle, and then the Israeli flag <laughs> would trigger somebody. But... People get triggered. Don't get triggered. Don't pull the trigger. If you get triggered over something like that, you shouldn't be handling weapons. Put your hand away from the weapon. Step away. Remember, gun safety first. We were taught that when we were kids. Gun safety. Learn how to use the weapon. All right. We're going to close this out. Um, we pray for the people in the storm. We pray for Florida. We pray for uh, if it's moving back towards Georgia or the Carolinas. Uh, they say it's p potentially possible. Uh, we pray for our nation. We pray for a president in Camp David right now. We know that the president in Camp David is talking about some very, very incredibly important things. It has to do with the reset. has to do with the security of this country and the world. And many positive things are happening. We feel more comfortable today than we did at any time. Light's going to win. I know a lot of people are losing patience. But what does the Bible tell us? Patience is a virtue. That's one of the things the scripture tells us over and over and over. It's through our trials and tribulations that we build patience. And that's how we get our endurance and our faith is through patience. We got to be patient. God is a patient God. God is a God of perfect timing. He will strike at the perfect time. But he also is a God that shows you his patterns. And he is showing us his patterns in the natural and in the supernatural, follow him, guide with him. 
He is showing you a pattern that this is all about to come down. So trust him in the wins. Nobody knows exactly when. I don't even believe the nine people of the Q team know the win because it's a chess match. It's counter move, counter move. But guess what? In the last times that you play chess, it's easy to play chess in the beginning. I am, I'm not a chess expert. Um, I've only played chess a couple times. It's, I'm a checkers kind of guy, you know? I'm a, I'm a knucklehead, chuckle, checkers, chuckles and checkers. But when you start out in chess, it's, it's pretty easy. The first couple moves are really, I mean, they're important, but the last few moves are the crucial ones. Have you ever seen a really intense international chess match between the old Russian and Americans back during the Cold War where they would they'd play for hours, they'd have to get up, they'd sweat, and they're talking about the next move that they're gonna make? That's the way it is, even more so, and what they have to do in these last moves. And these last moves have to be, they have to be right. And they have to be driven by the Most High God. That's why we pray for the president. Starting today, uh, today, 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 um, today for three days, fasting and prayer for the president of the United States to have discernment, have humility, because the Lord is going to use him for a mighty thing and he's got to be humble with us. The same goes for uh, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu. We're coming into September 17th which is the Israeli elections, and we are also coming in, so we need to pray for Benjamin Netanyahu as well, uh, because this is when the enemy likes to attack, when there's uh, activity, especially elections, going in uh, Israel. Uh, remember, we had a prophetic dream about uh, Benjamin Netanyahu being dirty and being cleaned with the soap, so we pray that prophetic dream is gonna come true, that Benjamin Netanyahu is gonna let the Most High God the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, direct him. Uh, and also, we're coming in to the end of this month, the three Hebrew festivals. You have Rosh Hashanah, which is the Feast of, uh, Feast of Shofars. That's September uh, 29th and October 1st. You have Yom Kippur, which is uh, the Day of Atonement, the holiest day on the Hebrew calendar. That's, uh, that is on October 8th. And then you have Sukkoth, which is the Feast of, uh, uh, Feast of Booths, or the Feast of Tabernacles. That's where they tabernacle outside of their uh, dom uh, domain for seven day. It's a seven day festival. That's where Jacob and Sukkoth in the, in the, in the Old Testament put up his booth to the Lord. Uh, so it's very important. These are three uh, huge, hugely important um, Jewish festivals and God uh, works on his Jewish calendar. He works in patterns and we just have to know his patterns and trust him and let him know the perfect timing. Uh, and the last thing we want to pray for each and every one of you, because we're upon the greatest harvest in the history of the world. This is the greatest time to be alive. But are you ready? Are you prepared to be able to do what the Lord wants you to do? Are you ready to be a part of the His glory army, the His glory nation that's going to go out and be that light of Christ in these end days? That you will have be that seed, that light of Christ to a family member, to a friend, or even a stranger because we're starting the outpouring of the greatest billion person harvest. The dark will come down, the light will come up, and we'll have a window of a great, great blessing. Blessing to the nations to bring in the harvest. It's called the billion person harvest. We pray that each and every one of you are ready for this. And may the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob bless each and every one of you. Until next time, God bless.